Hi everyone, it's Sarah from Plan Sarah Plan, and today we're going to walk through the 2023-24 Teacher Lesson Planners from Erin Condren, as well as new accessories. This year's Teacher Lesson Planners will come in three different sizes. So you can either get a seven by nine focused version that's coiled, you can get an eight by 10 soft bound version, or you can get an eight and a half by 11 coiled version. The designs that you will be able to choose from on the inside include Inspire, which is art by Etta V, or Wildflowers, which is the other signature design from Erin Condren for the Life Planners, or the Focused Collection, which is very plain, minimal, and non-colorful on the inside. First thing we're gonna do is walk through the soft bound 8x10 Teacher Lesson Planner. It is a lay flat 12 month lesson planner that begins in July of 2023 and goes through June of 2024. It has yearly, monthly, and weekly spreads, a communication log, checklists, lots of those, note pages, and more. The paper is 80 pound text weight paper. It's not the same paper that's in the coil planners, but it is still 80 pound nice paper that resists ink bleeding. So let's go ahead and take a look. So this is the gorgeous Inspire Design, painted by Jesse Raleigh, whose brand is Etta V. And I absolutely just love the impact of this first look inside. This is your name page where you can just put your name. And it says teacher lesson planner. It does not have the year. I would probably put my year right there. And then you have a somewhat revamped all about me area where you have the same circle here with your name, school, and year, your email address, phone, and your address. But this part is different here. I think this might be the same. Classroom resources and then professional development. And of course, if you don't need categories for that, you just cover that up with a sticker and make it whatever you want it to be. Over here is events and volunteers, classroom volunteer contact information. That's not what I'm going to use as a piano teacher, so I will cover that up and use this the way I've used it in the past. And I'll show you that when we take a look at the eight and a half by 11 coiled version. Classroom events and dates. The corners are rounded on this planner and you get that inspired design up at the top of some of the pages. Here is the first of, I think, two, no, there's just one, communication log. So you get two pages, but it's this one spread with columns for date, name, reason, resolved. And then you get an overview of July 2023 to December 2024 with more of the Inspire pattern at the top. And it's a little bit different each time. So it's not just like an exact copy of that pattern. Notice how it's different. And then this is where I keep student birthdays, but this is a 12 box area where you can do anything you like. If your school year begins in August, you might want to put August here, redate these boxes, because as it is, it's in order of the calendar year. But this is where I list my student birthdays. And we have some graph paper that says log it, graph it, map it, group it, track it. And you can do seating charts here. You can do a diagram of any area that you're working in, the band room, the choir room, whatever it is that you work in. And then this is the note spread that you'll see before every single month. So you have plenty of room to jot down important information for the month. This one says spread joy, it's contagious. And dates to remember in July. Then you open to the monthly view. I think this is absolutely beautiful. I love the splashes of color and I love how I'm keeping all that color under cover because the cover itself is blush and it's vegan leather, very soft and nice. But when you get inside, that's where the fun is. And so that's the July spread. This is what the weekly spread looks like. It is still a horizontal orientation. So your days are Monday through Friday. That's when most schools have classes. And you have room for six different classes or periods throughout the day. So one, two, three, four, five, six, with headers at the top, then a to-do section here. Now I know some people like to convert this and change it to a vertical orientation. So they might make this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then use this for notes. 
I would love to do that, honestly, but I have six students per day, and there are only five rows for that. So I could not really turn it to be a vertical orientation and have success with that in my case, but that's what a, what a lot of people do. And they cover up these dates here because they just visually, their mind works that way where they need the day to be vertical. But you're gonna find that most teacher lesson planners are horizontal in their orientation. So each week looks the same and that is the monthly color for July in all of the Erin Condren colorful planners. Then when you get to August, it switches to a gold. You are making a difference every day and then dates to remember in August and these are all lined notes areas. Here's the monthly spread with the inspired design in gold and then we have the last day of July with the navy blue and then we switch over to gold and it is sort of an ombre effect where you have the deepest gold at the top and then it gets more pale as you go along and lots of room for note taking and to-do list checklists over here in the sidebar. And then we'll flip quickly to September. Align action with intention. So you've got these little motivational thoughts up there on the top left side. Dates to remember in September. And here is the color scheme. And so we finish up August and then switch to the purple for September. And then October's notes page says, Time and attention can be the best gifts for our students. That's, that's a nice one. Dates to remember in October and then the monthly spread. And it is a Sunday start on the monthly spread. Wasn't it polite of October to begin neatly so we don't have any mix of colors here? That always kind of bugs my brain when I have two of the different colors. But the nice thing is that it's very clear for you to see when you reach the new month. When we get to what is this? It's going to be November. Find the good in every day. And the monthly spread. Like this is what I was talking about. My mind likes to see all one color, but it really is a helpful visual reminder that here is where the new month begins. Let's go to the December notes. Teachers Touch Hearts and Open Minds. And that's your December spread. And then we go into that lime green, still the ombre effect as you go down the page. And then January, the notes page says, success starts with a lesson plan. And here's your book where you can put your lesson plans. The January monthly spread. Here's the satin page marker. You get one of these, I think. Yeah, so if you want more than one page marked, which I do, um, you'll need to just add a bookmark. So February says, what you do makes a difference. And here is the spread for February. That's pretty, kind of a magenta. And this is what the weekly spread would look like. And then when we get to March, share kindness with others and yourself. Dates to remember in March. Love this because it's not just the mint color. You get splashes of some bright colors there as well. And then here's the weekly look in March. And then when we get to April, the little quote is to teach is to touch a life forever. And the monthly spread is like this. And you can always make it lie flat. There is the weekly spread. And... The notes page for May has a quote that says, if you believe it, you can achieve it. And here is the May spread. Nice and bright and springy. Although really every single month has a bright look to it, a cheerful look. And then when we get to June, I'm out of school by that point. It says, learn from yesterday, teach for today and create hope for tomorrow. And then look how pretty that is. Very nice. So this would actually make a decent planner for your actual life, except Saturday and Sunday are missing from the weekly spreads. But if you shifted it to vertical, you could go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then turn this sidebar into an additional day. So that could be Sunday. And it has lines on every day. So if you are somebody who really likes lines, then this is something to think about for your actual Planner. And then we get notes pages. And unlike the coiled versions, you cannot change how many notes pages or checklist pages because it is a bound book. So we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen notes pages. 
Then we go into the checklist pages. Now, I know my sister is a classroom teacher. She prefers the coil version because she likes to add more of these checklists. But we have an idea coming up for that. If you really like the softbound planner and you need more checklists, you don't necessarily need to get the coiled version. There is an alternative for you. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So you have 16 of the student checklist pages and 14 of the notes pages. And you have room for how many students? I counted 33 students. And then you have lots and lots of these. Um, I'm not going to count them out, but you have a lot. I know that it's enough for me to do 13 lessons across and keep attendance for my fall term, which is 13 lessons. And then I have 18 lessons in the spring term. That works out really well for me because I did use softbound last year. And then after that last checklist, you're at the end. This is the back cover. Celebrate all the wins, big and small. Okay, so you can compare the size. This is the eight and a half by 11 coiled version of the teacher lesson planner. This is the eight by 10 softbound that I just went through. This is the version that I used in 2019, 2020. It's very much unchanged on the inside and I'm not going to go through this whole thing, but I'm going to show you a few things that I did in this one. Just wanted to point out that on that first All About Me section, you can change what these headers say. So in my case, I put the officers and chair people of my local music teachers association here, my newspaper contacts for when we have recitals and events, and I want to share that with the local paper. I put my membership card in Music Teachers National Association here. Underneath this stack of stickers is my personal information. Then I use this stuff completely differently. I had tuition and then what the actual schedule of tuition was down here. So you can totally just change up these categories if, if it doesn't really apply to you. So um, that's what I did here. A communication log, what I did was keep track of pieces that I composed and products that I put on Teachers Pay Teachers. So didn't at all use it for a communication log. I added sticker date dots to help me remember when lessons were, when registrations went out, when they were due, when we had breaks, when we have festivals and recitals, things like that. On two of the graph sheets, I listed what my students were performing in the Christmas recital and then in the spring recital, and I've just covered up their names here. But because it's graph paper, it's very easy to quickly make a chart. On the next set of graph pages, I had originally intended before the pandemic situation, because this was my 2019-2020 book, to have a master class and plans here, but we ended up canceling that. We did go forward with our festival and we just did it virtually. So I just kept my list of students and what they were performing in the festival. In the notes section here, I really just use this to help me with our local music teachers association and my job in that association. I wore several hats, so these are just things that I kept track of that I did there. Flipping to the back of the planner, I kept track of studio license, which means music that I purchased that I have bought the right to make as many copies as I like. So this was just like a reference sheet for me. And then on one of the checklists, um, since I'm not a classroom teacher, I use this a little bit differently, but I would list my students from youngest to oldest over here. And then these are the different levels of scale, triad, arpeggio type awards, like technique exercises that my students can earn, and I would check them off as they earn them. And then just a little tip here, if you write the student's name over here in the left, a couple of things you could do. Every five lines, you could just draw a line to separate this by fives and then do the same thing over here, that helps. Or you could put the first initial of the student over here to just kind of help you keep track across both pages. On the next page, I kept track of practicing stars. So I had lesson one through 13 in the fall term and lesson one through 18 in the spring term. When you use a softbound planner, you don't get a pocket. So if you want to have a place to store some little odds and ends, like I put little notes from students in this pocket, um, you might take that into consideration or consider a folio, which we are going to go over in a few moments. And when the school year was going on, I did have some blank birthday cards here for any student that happened to have their lesson on their birthday. I could whip out a birthday card for them. 
Now, if you like the idea of a coil book instead of a soft bound, you can't, this is not one, but this is the right size. You can order the focused version of the teacher lesson planner, which will be seven by nine, just like this book. But I think the coil is going to be larger because this is just a notebook and the notebook coils are smaller than the planner coils. But this is how big it would be and you would get your pocket and you would get a lot of the same features that you would have in the eight and a half by 11 coiled version. If you get the coiled version of the teacher lesson planner, you can add in checklists. It's not an option when you have the soft bound version. This is the version I'm going with, so I'm very happy that this is also available. This is a brand new product. It's a seven by nine soft bound book that is for record keeping. Last year and the year before, I think, I think the year before, we also had a record book that was separate, but it was coiled and quite a bit larger than this. This is a more portable option. I really like this, I prefer this. So here's what we have on the inside. Teacher record book, and then you get the Inspire pattern over here on the inside cover. Class schedule. I love this page and wish it were in the teacher lesson planner because, when you're a piano teacher, you have to schedule each student independently. You can't just lump them all in the same spot. So I, it's like working a puzzle for a piano teacher every year to fit in all of the students that you have into a particular spot that works with their schedule as well as your schedule. So once you nail that down, it's really nice at the beginning of the school year or even when you change to a new semester to be able to see your entire weekly schedule. So I think I'm going to be using this and I wish I had an even larger one. And I, I, maybe I'll make a copy of this and put it inside my soft bound. I love this page. Class schedule has a place for the time over here. Monday through Friday, and you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve rows. Classroom events and dates. So the line is broken here, so you can put the date on the left and then the event on the right. Communication log, you get one, two of those, three, four. It's a little bit more than what you get in the teacher lesson planner. Then you have graph pages. So one, two, three, four graph pages, so four graph pages. Then you get into checklists, and I don't think the entire thing is checklists, no. So let's see how far this goes. Yeah, to about right here. This is past the middle of the book. So the middle of the book is right here. And I'm not going to count all of these. I'm just going to thumb through it so you can get a ballpark idea of how many checklist pages there are quite a few and then we will count the rows to see if it is the same as what you get in the lesson planner. I did get the same. There are 33 rows. Everything is just sort of compacted a little bit. 14 columns here and 19 columns here is what I got. And I like how the lines are different colors because that does help you kind of keep track of where you are. But still, I would go ahead and put the student's initial on this side if you're going all the way over onto the right page. So this is really handy. Then after you finish the checklist pages, you get all of these notes pages. And that's it. Inside cover, very pretty. It says Etta V and Erin Condren at the bottom. You are making a difference every day. Okay, now let's talk about folios and pockets and ways to kind of add storage to your teacher lesson planner. This is the new large size folio that came out with the Life Planner launch. It's intended for the seven by nine Life Planner. Now, the reason I brought this out, it is not meant to go with one of the teacher planners unless you get the seven by nine coiled focused version. That would work well in here. But I did test the soft bound in here, and I will say that it works. However, it is an extremely tight fit. So, this back pocket will accommodate the back cover of the soft bound teacher lesson planner, but I had to really work it in slowly and it took a little bit of doing to get that back cover into this back pocket. And once I did that, it fit nicely. I was able to close the folio, but when it came to zipping it, it was also a little bit tricky to get the zipper started. So once you get the zipper started, and it, you can do it, but once you get the zipper started, it will zip and close pretty easily. 
um, but it's not intended for that eight by 10 soft bound. I'm just saying, I think there are probably going to be one or two people who are interested in knowing whether or not the soft bound eight by 10 fits in this new folio since it is a new product. So yes, it does fit. It's not ideal. I would not take it in and out often. If you put it in there, I would just leave it in there. Another alternative would be to just use the folio as a cover, but don't tuck that back cover of the softbound planner into the pocket of the folio. It's a whole lot easier to use your planner that way, take it in and out, um, and it would really just be a way to protect your teacher lesson planner. So if that's something that you're interested in because you want some pockets, um, you do get three pockets, four pockets actually, on the left-hand side as well as four pen loops. So that's one possibility. There's also a pocket for a pad um, on the right-hand side. And if you don't tuck the back side of the planner into this pocket, you could use that as storage space as well. Another option for you is this vegan leather folio that I have in champagne, and look how nicely it shimmers. It's very soft and pliable, it feels great. And when you open it up, there is a space for you to tuck the back cover of your eight and a half by 11 teacher lesson planner in, and it holds it so beautifully. It's not a tight squeeze at all. I did try it with my soft bound eight by 10 and it swallowed it up. It's way too big for that. But if you have an eight and a half by 11 notebook from Erin Condren, any eight and a half by 11 letter size book will fit nicely in this and you'll have lots of room. Even after you put your planner in it, there's plenty of room to tuck in that soft bound record book as well as the Cool for School sticker book, some writing utensils, some post-it notes, some compliment cards up in the little pocket on the left-hand side, and there's an extra pocket on the right-hand side where you can put a nice notepad. You can also take any eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and fit it easily in the large pockets of this. So it's very practical for a school teacher, for a classroom teacher, or anyone who deals with eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, as most teachers do. There's a pen loop on the right side underneath the flap and a magnetic closure. Here's a whole new item. This is a pad folio. We have had the pad folios, I think they're called clip folios because they have a clipboard inside. We've had the ones that are sort of cardboard, chipboard. This is one that is sort of a vegan leather. It has a different feel than the folios. Doesn't feel quite as expensive as those do, but it looks nice and there's stitching here. There's metallic embellishment with the little asterisks that we have seen in this year's new Life Planner designs. And on the bottom right corner, we have that as well. I think it's Wisteria, which is the color of the new planner folio that has come out. And it has a nice pocket here with three elastic pen loops. This is not a pocket, it kind of looks like it, but it's just a reinforced sturdiness to this cover. This is not a pocket either. It does look like it, but it's not. And then you've got a gold metal clipboard and it fits an eight and a half by 11 notepad or just eight and a half by 11 papers. And Erin Condra makes so many notepads that you can customize. This is a plain one that's just lines and no colors, but there are so many beautiful ones that you can get to go with your clip folios in all kinds of designs. You can even personalize them with your name or the name of your school, the name of your class, anything like that. You can tuck pens over here in these pen loops. So we'll do that just to test it out. Try this one. There we go. And then you have room for goodies right here. Let's see if the new record book will fit. That's a little bit snug, but it will fit. And closes like this. And there is a spine on this one. So when you close it, if it's bulked up any with your pens or something tucked in the pocket, it does not keep the folio open. It still closes nicely, closes flat, just because of this about an inch and a half or so spine. The notepad itself doesn't fit very well in this pocket, although you can do it. It just doesn't go underneath the flap. You can still put it in there if you have a spare, an extra. But if you were just going to put individual pieces of paper over here, um, it would fit very nicely. And this fits. 
You can't get it all the way to the edge because of the thickness of this, but still, it does fit. So this is kind of an upgraded clip folio. I use these all the time. When I have a guest teacher in my studio and they are taking notes for my students or maybe they're judging a festival for me, I let them have the older version of the clip folios. I let them have one of those and they tuck the um, comment sheets that they haven't written on yet over here. And then as they're writing, they bring the comment sheet they're writing on over here and it works really nicely. There is no closure on this. It's just an open situation and there's no elastic on it like the cardboard or chipboard versions of the clip folios. This one will just, you know, come open. You could probably put a strap around it. We'll try one. This metallic elastic um, band does fit if you go this way. It will not fit vertically, just horizontally. A planty pack will fit on it if you do it horizontally. The strap goes around it. Not, It's not difficult, but that is one way to keep it closed if you need to keep it closed. Okay, now let's have some fun and go over the accessories. They're offering us a new four pack of washi tape that is especially for teachers. And there's a rainbow one, a one with various headers, some apples, and then sort of a motivational quote with some checklist dots. So I've sampled them out on the back page of my softbound planner. Here's what those four look like. The apples, one is absolutely gorgeous and it's not the same as the teacher apples washi that we had before. I've sampled those down here. They're a little bit different. Those had an asterisk in the middle of the apple and they were spaced a little bit farther apart. This one is on a white background. The apples are close together and there's no asterisk. So it's a little bit different. And then the Inspire Learn Teach pink washi there is really cute. I imagine that you could cut this and use part of it as a checklist if you wanted to, or you could just embellish with those little dots instead of using them as checklists. If you do want to use it as a checklist though, you're either going to need to use a ballpoint pen or a permanent pen because this is the waxy texture of washi tape. And then you've got headers here to copy, to prep, to call, to follow up on, to grade. And then it starts over. So that would be great for a notepad. Um, so these are just cute little washi tapes that you might want to dress up your papers with. And then our next accessory is stickers. We have edition seven of the Cool for School sticker book, which has undergone a transformation like the other sticker books in that it opens from top to bottom. And it's like a pad instead of a book. So here's your first sheet. These are header stickers that will fit perfectly in the eight and a half by 11 book on the headers in your weekly spread. This is a new sheet to do list. And these are just kind of watercolor backgrounds in different colors and they're embellished with silver metallic foiling. This has rose gold metallic and these are really cute. Little apple note stickers that you could use for literally anything. And these are just functional, nice stickers. So you've got a whole column here that says meeting in different colors. And then that's gold metallic on two of them. Conference, a whole column of those. Testing and IEP. And those are clear stickers. So if we take one off, you'll see it's like kind of the plastic kind that's transparent. And you have to put it on a white background before it will show up. You can't really see anything there. But if you put it down on a white background, I sacrificed an IEP one because I don't ha have need of those. And on the next sheet, it's the same sort of thing, but these are split in half. So you don't get a whole column of these. You get half of a column of field trip stickers, then personal day. Then half a column of assembly, half development half a column of observation, and then half for planning. Now I need like a whole deal for planning, but I love the planning one. One fourth of the column is tutoring, one fourth is library, one fourth is early release, and the last fourth is break begins. And then some meeting stickers or any other event where you have the starting time and the ending time, and you just fill out what the event is up here. I love these birthday stickers. That's a new thing, and that's rose gold metallic. I love those. And then, let's see how many you get. 
16. So not quite enough, I don't think. I think I, I have 24 students and I'd say most classroom teachers have more than that. So um, you might wanna get two books if you love that. And then some washi strips that have motivational sayings and I'll just read a few of them. Teachers create tomorrow in the minds of today. You make a difference every day. You don't just teach, you inspire. Creativity is contagious. There is no substitute for hard work. Be the reason someone smiles today. Strive for progress, not perfection. And a lot of those sayings are also on the notes page in the teacher lesson planner. Beautiful circles. They are embellished in rose gold metallic and you just get a variety of colors. I like the, that the colors are not super dark because they're easier to see your writing on. Some little icon stickers that are transparent tacks up here, two rows of those, two rows of coffee cups, check marks, asterisks, one row of stars, no, two rows of stars, except these are cutout stars and these are circle stars. Two rows of paper clips, and the paper clips have a little asterisk on the end, that's cute. Two rows of birthday cakes and then one row of hearts. And then these look like habit trackers. And they're an inch and a half wide, I can just see that. I mean, I guess they are. Yes, those are an inch and a half wide. And so you could use those in your regular life planner. And then these are like to-do list, sidebar type stickers. You can see the apples in the background here. And then just kind of um, brush strokes in rainbow colors in the background there. And all these little scalloped circles say, note to self. So a lot of these stickers would not need to be used by teachers, but let me just show you how these fit. They're meant for the headers here, but in the softbound planner, they are too large. So um, don't expect these to fit in the softbound planner. They will be a perfect fit in your eight and a half by 11 planner though. So for example, you can actually get stickers customized at Erin Condren, at least you used to be able to. So these are some that I had customized for my scheduling. Um, but you could just put the name of your subject, the period number, whatever. And these will fit perfectly right here. So you can fill in what your subject is or whatever. I should mention, since we're talking about stickers, that the teacher lesson planner does come with four sheets of stickers in the back that are coiled in, and you'll get a variety of stickers such as these and some other things. Um, but I have used them all up, removed them, taken them somewhere else from this planner so I don't have any to show you. You will not get stickers if you get the softbound version, and I think you will probably not get stickers if you get the focused version. Next up, we have some writing tools. This is a set of dual tip list markers. This is a brand new set. This is a dual tip dual ink highlighter pen set, and this is a new set as well. So let's do a pen test on these. Here is how the list markers worked, and it's all checks and check boxes, which I like. And then the pens themselves are not all black like they have been. A few of them are actually the color of the stamp side. So the Lagoon one, the Orchid one, and the gray one have a pen that matches the color of the stamp side. The other three just have a black pen on one side and then the colorful stamp on the other. Now these are notorious for bleeding through sometimes. So let's take a look. There's a little bit of shadowing and just a touch of bleed through. So be prepared for that with the stamp part of it. The pen part of it is not going to bleed through, it's fine. But the stamps are very inky, so just be ready for that to happen. But I know that on your checklist pages, these really make a nice look if you just use a stamp to check off things. The, um, there's an improvement here that I noticed. You actually get a picture of what the stamp is on this side. And I don't think there has been a picture of the stamp on the pens in the past. It doesn't help you line up the pen necessarily. You still have to kind of look at where the shape comes out of the stamp side to see if you are doing it correctly, you know, straight instead of 
all wonky. Here are the new highlighters and all of the pens are black, but the highlighters are these different colors. And the biggest news of all you guys is that they have put the name of the color on the pen now. So here's one, you can see where it says cornflower. In the past, we've had to just figure it out by comparing the pen to the packaging and then sometimes just writing the name of the pen color. So these have the color written on them. That is a big win. They listen to us. Wonderful. Did these bleed through? No, they did not. They did not. The only thing that bled through were the little bits of the stamp markers, but not these highlighters. Um, maybe at the end where you just, you know, kind of get a little extra pooling of ink, there's a bit of shadowing there. Nice. Okay, I have a few more accessories to show you. This is a focused post-it note pad, and it is literally post-it note brand, and it feels like it has about 20 to 25 sheets on it. This is thinner paper than usual, so this might be one of their eco-friendly products that they've been coming out with. But it says, in my classroom, and then there's a little highlighted area for the date, prep in the first box, contact in the next box, and then a checklist here. So this is just a really handy functional thing to add into your order. And then here is a notepad that I absolutely love. So check out the pen here. This is an Erin Condren gel pen. This is an Erin Condren mechanical pencil. And we've got the, a ruler here with an asterisk on it. That's maybe the Erin Condren ruler that we had with the big numbers on it. And then a globe, and this looks like um, like a tube of paint. And in the background, you can see a globe, a ruler, um, more like a paper airplane, and other things. And this design, without these white boxes on it, is available in a cover. So if you like this design and you want it to be the cover of your coiled book, you could definitely get that. This says, in my classroom, it may be customizable, I'm not sure. The Erin Condren team sent me all of these things to review and share with you. So I don't know if they all say in my classroom or if they just added that to the pads that the affiliates got. And then there's a blank area for the dates. Checklist here, contact, prep, and then totally blank. This is so functional. I like this a little bit better than some of the notepads we've had in the past because can't you just see how this works in any teacher setting, even an office setting? Because it's not geared only to a classroom teacher, even though that says classroom. Um, I can use this very easily. All right, here is a new snap-in to-do list dashboard. It says universal, so that means it fits different size books. You could use this in the seven by nine coiled focused version of the teacher planner in an A5 regular old planner if you don't have a teacher planner or in the eight and a half by 11 coiled book. It doesn't work in the soft bound planner unless you just trim this off and tuck it in as a bookmark, which you could do actually. All right, so this says copies and then grade and then contact. Rose gold accenting here and some checklists. I recommend using a permanent pen on these if you're going to slide them in your books because you just want to avoid any possibility of the ink transferring onto the paper. Wet erase markers that Erin Condren has are very good, but I would still blot them before I tuck them in my book because I, I just don't like any ink smearing to get on my pages. But if you used a permanent pen, you can still get it off if you use an alcohol wipe. The back says to do and looking ahead. And you can see the inspired design with mostly blues and purples in the background and some rose gold accenting right here. All right, then these are sold out right now, but these were all the rage. It's a set of three snap-in pocket dashboards and each one of them has a tab in a different spot, left, middle, or right. So this is one of the three. I hope they get these back on the site soon because these would work in your coiled teacher planner too. 
They're seven by nine, so they're not as large. You would not put a letter size piece of paper in here unless you folded it. But you can put other things in here, little pieces of paper that you need to refer to in your classroom. So if this is back in stock, it's called a Snap-in Pocket Dashboard and it comes in a set of three. And here is our new seven by nine Snap-in Dashboard for teachers, but anybody else could use them as well. Learn from yesterday, teach for today, and you have a daily schedule, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you even get Saturday and Sunday split. Not always do we get that when it's a teacher product. So this is nice to have the weekend before school and after school. So this is your getting ready. This is your closing up shop. And then you've got six blank boxes here. This is one of the new styles of notes pages that Erin Condren has come out with. And I'm glad they made a dashboard with it because you can literally use this for anything that you want and just create your own header and take notes. Again, I would write with a permanent pen if I were you. It's not absolutely necessary, but it does prevent smearing. This will fit in either a seven by nine book or an eight and a half by 11 book. Of course, it's not as big as the eight and a half by 11, but it's going to stick out if you try to put it in an A5 size book. Launch day for Erin Condren Insiders is May 16th for the um, teacher lesson planners, so mark your calendar. The general public will be able to shop on the following day, and I know there will be some special things that I don't think I'm allowed to mention on launch day for insiders. So make sure you are signed up to be an Erin Condren Insider. It's very easy, very free to sign up for that. And I thank you so much for watching. If I did not cover one of the products that you're interested in and you want me to look into it and find the answer to a question for you, I hope you'll feel totally free to ask me. I will have my affiliate shopping link down there in the video description if you would be so kind as to click on that. It doesn't cost you anything extra to use an affiliate link. And it gets me a little teeny percentage of your order. So I greatly appreciate that. Thank you to the Erin Condren team for sending me these goodies to review and also to use in my piano studio next year. Super excited about this. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.